Well, hello, it's Suge here, everybody, and today I'm going to be seam sealing this brand new, unseam sealed, superior gear hammock tarp. Now, most tarps you get in this world are going to have to be seam sealed, and that goes for a tent or a tarp. Unless you're paying high, 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 very high, I mean ultra high, I mean way up there prices, then maybe that tent or tarp is seam sealed. But you can look inside and see if it has kind of a clear plastic strip. It's called seam taping. Yes, then you may not have to seam seal. But for most tarps you get, you're going to have to seam seal it. And that goes with tents as well. Is that redundant? I think it was. Now the places I'll be doing the seam sealing will be right here on the panel pullouts, the side of the tarp where you can pull out to get a little bit more space inside. And you can see it's stitched right in here. You can see the stitches, so I need to get some seam seal in those. If we go inside, here's the inside of the pullouts. Of course, I'm going to be sealing this top seam. It has the double stitches in it. And on the inside, I'll probably seal that too, but I generally tend to seal the outside because I don't really care what my tarp looks like. And I'm definitely going to be seam sealing this gusset right here, and that gives strength to the whole tarp along the top for where your D-rings are. The other thing I wanted to talk about is make sure you get the right seam sealer for the job. This is a sill nylon tarp, so if it's sill nylon or sill poly, you want to get one that says sill on it. Silicone tent sealer. So with the silicone, sill nylon means it's silicone impregnated nylon. Now you can get this same brand, and this is from REI, but it won't say silicone. So if your tarp is nylon, you know, it's a coated PU coated tarp, the old style tarp, you're probably paying less for that tarp. Get the proper seam sealer for the proper tarp or tent. Did I make that clear? Another thing you can do is make your own. You go out and just buy some clear silicone, something like this, and you mix it 50-50 with mineral spirits. I just do it in an empty tuna fish can. And I like to use a brush like this, a cheap foam brush, to spread my seam sealer. You can use your finger, or oftentimes seam sealer comes with a little brush like that. That's kind of my least favorite thing to use. Now the war bonnet tarps come with a stitching at the top, and they're sort of grogane sewn in up there that the ridgeline seam does not need seam sealing. I'll tell you what, I'm just gonna confess, I seam seal mine anyway on the inside because why have a leak if you don't have to? In fact, this tarp, I'll probably end up seam sealing it inside and outside. But even on the war bonnet tarps, it'll come with a little bit of seam sealer, and that is for seam sealing your side pullouts, all right? Which is usually on the center of the tarp on the sides. And what'll happen? Not so bad when you have your tarp pitch tight, but you know, you may have some gear laying on the ground and if it's a heavy rain, it'll just keep running over those threads and leak through. But if you have your tarp sort of in porch mode and that pull out seam is up there, it'll definitely drip through. So you have to seam seal those as well. And with your tent, anywhere that's being exposed to that rain, seam seal it! Now, if you've got a Cuban fiber or what they call DCF tarps nowadays, and you probably spent a lot of money for that, you don't have to seam seal those. They're kind of bonded together. You take those two ends like that, and they're basically sort of glued. So they don't require seam sealing. But if you have sill nylon, sill poly, or a nylon PU coated tarp, then you're going to need to seam seal that thing. It's up to you. You can put masking tape or any kind of tape down along the sides of those seams and then put your seam sealer on and then pull the tape up. It doesn't stick great to seal nylon, but if you're a fastidious and neat person, you go ahead and do that. I used to. I don't bother with it anymore. I just slap it on like all my stuff. It looks a little bit hillbilly. So here we go with a little bit of a taped place. I'm just going to put a little bit on there like that. And then I'm going to take my brush, smooth it in, really trying to get into the stitches and this little overlap 
on this side right here. And then I'll peel this tape up. Is pretty neat. But that's the inside. Nobody's going to see that but me. The important part is to really get in on these and get up under this little edge here. And what I'm going to do is go right in here. Of course, I want it as neat as I can kind of get it. I'm just going to get this area. Do not skip this top area. I'm even going to get these little threads right at the end here. Just because it's at the peak. Normally I wouldn't worry about the edge too much, but I'm right up here, so I'm going to go ahead and do it. Now you can get your paper towel. I got a little bit of alcohol in this spray bottle. I'm going to spray it on a paper towel, and I'll get that little drop off right there. I'll go along the edges anywhere I got a little bit out of line. I'm doing that while it's still a little still a little wet. So now what I'm going to do is just kind of continue on down the line. I just go ahead and just drop this is my technique. I just drop a little bit of seam sealer kind of on there. And then I'm just going to start rubbing that in. And I'm, I'm pressing down with a you know a little bit of force here just to make sure to really get into those threads. For me, I don't care really how it looks. I mean, I'm not going to spread it out to here or here. But I want to really make sure that I get it where it needs to be. And now what I'll do is I'll just continue on down the tarp. And I actually had to kind of flop it over and hang it down there. All right, moving on to these pullouts now. On the inside of the tarp, so same thing. Just spread a little of the seam sealer in there. These are very important. Do not forget these. Even if you get a war bonnet tarp and you get that tiny little bit, a very small tube of seam sealer, it is for your side pullouts. Get those threads. Anywhere they're stitching, because you will get water through there when you least expect it or least want it. Push that in really nicely. Again, I don't mind mine being slightly sloppy, because I am. Now make sure to read on your seam sealer when you get it. This one says, clean and dry surface above 60 degrees, apply Thin film across seams and under fabric folds. Cure for three to six hours. So I've done this a lot. It seems more often than not, people get a new tarp or tent. Uh, they seam seal it at the last minute because they're going camping tomorrow, the next day. So that three to six hours, you know, six, eight hours with this stuff, it's still a little bit tacky. And when you wad that thing up or fold your tarp or tent up and get to camp, uh, where it is seam sealed, it's going to kind of slightly stick to each other. And the way to prevent that is take some baby powder or some sort of talc like this gold bond. And after it has dried for, you know, just do this right before you leave and pack it up and put it in the bag. Um, just throw some talc on it. Now, I'm not going to do it now, but I would just take that and I'm just going to put that right down there. Get it a little bit dusty with the talc. And that will really help with this nut sticking together. And what you can do later when you get home after the trip, just, you know, just lay your tarp or tent back out, take a damp cloth or paper towel, and just, you know, wipe that talc away. And some of it might sort of stick a little bit into the seam sealer. Don't worry about it. In time, it just kind of goes away. Sometimes I'll dip this brush a little bit in some mineral spirits that I pour in my tuna can just to thin out 
that seam sealer a little bit because that'll just evaporate and even if you make your own with clear silicone and mineral spirits what happens is you mix it 50 50 kind of goopy you don't want it so much that it's running everywhere a little bit thicker than syrup but you don't want it running down your tarp if you decide to spread your tarp outside and not inside like i'm doing if you have room like me lay it on a long table lay it across a two by ten whatever or just go pitch your tarp outside paint the seam sealer on the top outside or flip your tarp over so the inside seam is on the outside and do it there if you don't want anyone to see it so i really make sure that i get that seam sealer down in that seam well because one leak and it always just seems to be in your face or chest area one leak coming through a tarp can just ruin your whole trip in the rain because everything is going to get wet Watch a steam seal yourself there, Silk. <laughs> 